Welcome to the second episode of Series 28, everyone. Numenera with Darcy Ross. Before we begin today's episode, we want to take some time to talk about recent events. Mm -hmm. In the wake of the murder of George Floyd, protests have broken out all over the world, demanding justice and calling for deep systemic changes. We want to make it clear that we stand with those protesters and with the Black Lives Matter movement. Racism is not a flawed opinion of a select few, but a pervasive system of oppression that has been institutionalized and codified over hundreds of years and has touched every one of our lives. For those of us who are white, it has granted us inherent privilege that has been denied to members of the black community. We must acknowledge that fact and work to correct this imbalance by supporting meaningful and lasting change. Yeah, the the violence uh, we have seen against protesters at the hands of the police uh, may seem shocking to many of us, but for black people, it is and has been a brutal uh, daily truth. Uh, the outrage and helplessness many of us feel cannot begin to compare to that of the black community. Uh, in this moment, those of us in positions of privilege must take time for meaningful reflection and acknowledge that privilege, even when it makes us uncomfortable. We are asking members of our community to stand with those that have been oppressed and betrayed by this corrupt system. We encourage you to donate to organizations like the National Bail Fund or Black Lives Matter. We ask that you seek out minority businesses, artists, and creators and support them. We ask that you take time to contact your local, state, and federal representatives and advocate for defunding the police and investment in Black communities. We've put links in our show notes for places that you can donate and resources that you can use to educate yourself. Yeah, uh, we have not always gotten things right here. Uh, our privilege has often blinded us. Uh, there is always room for growth. We hope that you will all join us as we try to do better. Uh, we are all able to contribute in different but meaningful ways, and no step is too small in this fight. So please, please take a look at the resources we have linked uh, in the show notes and join us in fighting for justice that is very long overdue. episode of Character Creation Cast, Amelia was creating a prepared nano who howls at the moon. Darcy was creating a nurturing rite who crafts illusions. And I was creating a serene delve who moves like a cat. We are picking up right where we left off last time. Enjoy. I think I'm going to create a hover disc as one of my plans because that sounds Ooh. extremely awesome and i feel like that would be a fun thing to be able to like whip together yeah. so that's its minimum crafting level is two which means like it'll probably be a level two or so task to create a sort of basic version of it but if mm -hmm. i want to create like better versions um so that's considered a vehicle which is pretty cool so we can all have hover discs maybe nice that'd be pretty then, sweet so what about, yeah. I have a choice between light armor or one extra unit of responsive synth. So that is uh, if we are going to be playing a lot with like the, the crafting mechanic. Yeah. Responsive synth is a, um, let me, let me show, find a Numenera plan. That would be uh, something you can basically hack together to create ciphers to, um, you know, my, my hover disc will uh, require different kinds of quote unquote iotum mm. these are like you know to create my hover disc i might need like a big weird sheet of metal and that's kind of a basic thing right it's a mm -hmm. I, I might need wood or you know some hard component to be the big disc but then i need like the the numenera oomph right like yeah. what's the weird magical power behind the hover disc and that's what you start using quote unquote iotum for mm. these are responsive synth um what are some other cool ones 
they uh do, 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 do. they are really fun. Uh Azure Steel, Synth Steel, Apt Clay, uh Amber Crystal Oraculum. So there are all these different um fancy kind of core components of Numenera magical power. And you can find them out in the world. You might need to go seek one out for like a really cool high level crafting you might want to do. And um, the right is not the only person who can craft. Anybody can craft. I'm just like a little more at, better at it. I've got some skills and some training. That's awesome. Yeah. So I've got, uh, I come with two ciphers. Nice. Chosen by the GM. Uh, we don't have a GM. So let me roll some dice then. Cool. Uh, yeah. Because I'm assuming you have a list somewhere. Yes. In the book, there is a part six Numenera, uh, chapter 17 ciphers, cipher list. Uh, one thing I do deeply appreciate is all the MCG books are very hyperlinked and bookmarked. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you can, and I know that work is like, Really hard. Super, super tedious. It's super Somebody tedious. Has to do some of that for their job sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you, Bear Whiter and Zoa Smalley, who have done this for us, and some other <laughs> folks we've contracted to. Um, you are heroes who live forever in my heart. Cool. So let me know when you roll a percentile, and I will give you a cipher. Awesome. So uh, I rolled 38, <laughs> which is one higher than what was guessed. Yes. You get a hunter seeker. Ooh. Let me pull that up. Very fun. And I get two ciphers, so this is interesting. Oh, yeah. I get three. What? Dang. Cool. A hunter seeker uh, can come in different forms. So, like, the GM can decide, or you can decide. Uh, the effect is with long range movement, this intelligent missile tracks and attacks a specific target uh, that must be within sight when selected. Um, if it misses, it continues to attack one additional time per cipher level until it hits. Mm. For example, a level four hunter seeker will attack a maximum of five times. Different hunter seekers have different effects. Cool. Want to roll again on the percentile? Yeah, let's, let's find do out it. what kind you got. What kind do I got? 84. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> you get one that explodes, inflicting six points of damage to all within immediate range. So you got a super explosive one. Nice. And then do you want to roll a d6 for me to determine yeah, its level? Come on, six. Six! Oh, wow, cool. Yeah. So you have a very powerful one. So, you know, if someone tries to, like... Uh, shoot your missile out of the sky it'll probably be like a it'll act as a level six thing which is really high so like some little level three you know soldiers who you're uh you know who are attacking you from their hideout uh are not going to be able to get this missile out of the sky because mm -hmm. they're too low of level so what one thing that's really nice is there the gm doesn't roll in numenera mm -hmm. and so when you're dealing with like npcs and like what they're doing, you do a lot of just like comparing levels. Like everything in Cypher is just level. Is it a high level? Is it low level? <laughs> Most stuff is <laughs> less good. <laughs> awesome. Uh, cool. So my other Cypher is a mono blade. Oh my gosh. Which sounds super sweet. It is really one of my favorite. Uh, it is definitely one of my favorite Cyphers. So the mono blade uh, produces a six inch blade that's the same level as the cipher. The blade cuts through any material of a level lower than its own. Again, everything is levels. Wow. <laughs> uh, if used as a weapon, it is a light weapon that ignores armor of a level lower than its own. So it really like dives in. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, and so because it's the same level, uh, so the, the cipher will do, so let's let's roll your level. Let's roll my level. Means. Oh, just one. Plus two. Oh, that's okay. It's still nice. One plus two, so three. So you have a level three mono blade. Uh, it will do three points of damage, ignoring armor for any sort of low level, like you know, three or lower mm -hmm. NPCs, or you know, like the whole, like the whole of like you know, a really robust spaceship might not be able to get. This might not be able to pierce quite through, but like walls are going to be absolutely monobladed through and the blade lasts for 10 minutes so you've nice. got it for a while cool do you want to roll up some ciphers amelia i do yeah really do okay <laughs> uh 97 Ooh. i like those big numbers vocal translator Ooh. Ooh. oh i'm so excited um there's some other books too that give you like 
lots more ciphers. Um, so there's Sir Arthur's Guide, which is like a, just a book full of cool ciphers and artifacts and oddities. Uh, so there's plenty more, but the book comes with a bunch. So vocal, where is it? Vocal translator. Its effect is that it translates everything said by the user into a language that anyone can understand for 28 hours per cipher level. Oh, wow. oh yeah. A day on the ninth world is 28 hours long. Don't worry about it. Uh, so why don't you roll a D six? Two. Cool. So, uh, it'll do for two whole days. This thing will make you un- intelligible by any person that can understand language. Very nice. Uh, so there are some other details on these ciphers, like, you know, is it an internal thing or a wearable thing? So this suggests that it's a headband if you get like a wearable version of it. Or if it's internal, it could be a pill or an ingestible liquid. Like I could make a cool, weird Numenera tea for you. That's a cipher like this. Um, nice. But often what I do is like when you use it, like tell me what it looks like. That's usually how I GM it just because I'm lazy and don't want to run it all, write it all down. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Uh, what's your next one, Amelia? Uh, 92. Ooh. Oh, Lord. Time dilation nodule defensive. So let's pull that up. (laughs) This this is going to be fine. Uh I'm sure this is fine. (laughs) Cool. A time dilation nodule is, uh, has the effect of for the next 28 hours, the next day, the attacker moves at almost instantaneous speeds when they... Oh, the, uh, I'm reading the wrong one. For the defensive time dilation nodule, the wearer of the armor moves in seemingly random rapid jumps a few inches to one side or the other when attacked. This is an asset, meaning it lowers the difficulty of a related task, that eases, a tasks, eases attacks by two steps. Uh, that wild. <laughs> No, they must. I found a typo. Good job, me. (laughs) That eases defenses by two steps, uh, three levels if it's a super high level cipher. So basically, you're able to duck and dodge out of the way. And lots of times ciphers like this is a thing that is very obviously like fashioned to act as like an armor that like helps you defend Mm -hmm. and jump out of the way. But like Numenera is very lends itself toward like MacGyvering weird solutions with the weird tools that you have. So I can imagine a world where people use this not to defend from attacks, but to dodge out of the way of falling stalactites and, Mm -hmm. you know, other like kind of unusual cases like that. So why don't you roll me a, a D six. I got a four. Ooh, cool. So, uh, it will, you're, it's going to ease your defenses by two steps. So, Cool, cool, cool. All right, one more. Awesome. 35. Let's see what that is. 35 is a gravity nullifier. (laughs) All right. Maybe I don't need the hover disk. (laughs) Cool. What do you do, gravity nullifier? For one hour, the user can float into the air, moving vertically, but not horizontally without some other action like pushing along the ceiling or being towed by a rope probably so uh for one hour you can float into the air moving vertically up to a short distance per round and a short distance is like um like a couple of feet uh like maybe two yards um it is it's in the rules somewhere but Numenera is very like not working on a grid you're either immediate short distance or long distance or like way far (laughs) (laughs) the user must weigh uh uh, less than 50 pounds per level of the cipher. So why don't you roll the level of that cipher? See how much I weight. I got a four again. Wow. So the level is a D6 plus three for this one. So seven. So you have many hundreds of pounds of weight. You have seven times 50. 350? <laughs> mm-hmm. I can math. <laughs> so uh, you have something that can lift 350 weight uh, pounds of weight for any user for a while. Oh, Very nice. cool. Yeah, so I'm sure you can already see how, like, if you're exploring a dungeon, these ciphers will really, like, change your options. You, mm-hmm. know, you have your existing abilities, but you've got these this rotating cast of strange abilities you can throw out once and mm-hmm. find really innovative solutions to things. And it's really cool because uh, when you're in the thick of things, you're going to find ciphers here and there. 
Yes. And you, you kind of want to use the ones you have so you can actually pick up more since there's that cipher limit. Yes, exactly. Right. That's what the cipher limit is for, so, encouraging you to use them. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't have the, the Final Fantasy syndrome of, I've got 99 high potions. I can't use them because then if I do, <laughs> then I need to get more. Yeah. <laughs> I'm playing FF7 for the first time, the original, and I, I feel you. I'm finally getting to the point. <laughs> uh huh. Hoarding. <laughs> I've got 99 cabins. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come at me. Uh, Amelia, do you have one more or you had. No, that was three. Time I have dilution. one oddity, though. I, I have one awesome. oddity as well. Oddities are my favorite part of equipment in Numenera. It is so good. So. <laughs> Um, I'm going to take two ciphers. I'm going to take a force screen projector. Oh, I, I get three. Uh, I'll just take two for now and keep one slot open in case we find stuff in our adventure. Ooh. So I've got a force screen projector, which creates an immobile plane of solid force, 20 feet by 20 feet for one hour per cipher le level. Mm. And the plane conforms to the space available. So if you've got like a weird shaped archway, it'll just, it, you have that surface area and it'll like throw up a good... Like force field, basically. Nice. And the other one I'm taking is uh, a Catholicon. Uh, it is a it's an injector that's going to cure any disease of the cipher level or lower. So I've got a cool mm. like anti disease thing. Awesome. Okay, so you get an oddity. They are so fun. So we're gonna roll on the oddity table. So Numenera come in three three ish broad categories. Um, sort of artifacts, ciphers, and oddities. Uh, artifacts are pieces of Numenera that work so well that they can like keep being used. So you get a couple of uses out of them, but eventually, you know, it's ancient. It'll like go haywire. So you sort of roll to a depletion roll every time you use it and find out like, is this the time it kind of, you know, stops on mm. us? Ciphers are one use and oddities are intended to be <laughs> like, just strange little, um, you know, knickknacks, right? Mm -hmm. Little weird pieces of Numenera that are odd. Um, <laughs> yeah, so this is what the chapter has to say about oddities. Like, you know, these provide verisimilitude. You know, not everything that you're going to find is like, intended for explorer to use and second they're interesting you can use them for like barter or gifts and third and perhaps more, more important they add more mystery and feelings to the unknown to the world and the game because they are really odd you know why mm -hmm. did someone make this what could this possibly be for so let's roll on the oddity table mm -hmm. a d100 yeah i got 99 for mine oh boy okay you, uh, my dear Delve, get a box filled with two dozen spherical magnets, each about the size of a pea. I love that. Uh, so yep. what is that? Buckyballs? Is that the thing that uh, that I've got? Buckyballs? Yeah. Awesome. Those yeah. Heck yeah. Uh, things that they banned because people were swallowing them. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, it was, it was mostly like if kids were swallow more than one of them, uh, they could pinch a part of their very bad once they, once they get into the intestinal area. Uh, yeah, especially. Well, you already as a delve, you understand the dangers uh -huh. of these strange little magnets. <laughs> these little pea-sized magnets. Uh huh. Uh, Amelia, what do you roll? Thirty-three. Thirty-three. Very exciting. You. Ooh. Awesome. You get a small wand-like device that keeps away normal insects in a five-foot radius. Mm. I'm like already imagining like the campfire scene that we have where we're all like trying to like <laughs> just absolutely glue ourselves next to Amelia's character. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and uh, would someone mind rolling a percentile for me? I don't have my dice right here. 20. 20. Thank you. A plastic bottle containing a spray that cleans any stain and never runs out. Aww. Okay, cool. I'm not an armor anymore. I'm definitely a tailor. Oh, that's awesome. Cool. That has decided that mm -hmm. character trait for me. Oh, I love it. Infinite stain so, remover. That's amazing. Yeah, I feel like um, maybe I'm, I, I'm getting the sense that th there's a world in which Amelia and my character are very like concerned with like the elements being like bad and mm -hmm. like you know i don't like getting dirty and amelia doesn't like getting bit by insects which is very legit mm -hmm. uh but we've, we're also traveling with this delve who like you know <laughs> i i assume eats lava for breakfast and just 
isn't afraid of any mud hole. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I picture that uh, as many times as my character will flip over uh, walls and crawl under the, the smallest nooks and crannies to get to the, the deepest, darkest places of these caves and dungeons, uh, we all look immaculate. <gasps> Yes. <laughs> like, I, when we get out of the dungeon, all our clothes are, like, shiny. It's like, did you even do yes. anything? So well, we got all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. I, like, rival exploring parties are always baffled by uh, us, I'm sure. I, I can see it being, like, kind of this legend of, like, they're so good that they don't even get dirty. Yeah. Oh, my God. I love it. I, for some reason, I have the, like, Jesse and James and Meowth, like, animation scenes for us. Like, we emerge from a dungeon and uh-huh. uh, we've got, like, sparkles. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you, uh, in your type, it leads you through picking um, some equipment and then it leads you into your first, first tier ability. Mm-hmm. So, you'll want to pick uh, however many options of that it gives you. So, so I come yeah. with uh, one weapon. Cool. And since I'm proficient in light or medium, I get to choose. I met. I would imagine. Um, yep. and it also gets to choose between like melee or ranged of some sort. Yep. Goodness. So um, there is a list be... of weapons if you like, but yeah. again, because the the mechanics behind it are so. Uh, standardized. Yeah. Like make up whatever weapon you like. Yeah. <laughs> So I will be taking, uh, I think there's some equipment that I really like that like that are very evocative for me personally. Oh, I like the Sisk. Um, it is a, a solid bladed throwing disc about the diameter of a human head. Mm. Uh, it's a short range weapon. Uh, and I just think it's like really cool looking. Um, so like, uh, some, like Xena's chakra. Uh, it, that is exactly what it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds amazing. <laughs> So I'm going to have a Sisk. There's a little light weapon. Mm -hmm. Two points of damage. Uh, Shins are the currency in Numenera. uh, With sort of a, you know, big air quotes across that. Uh, The Ninth World is a place that's like, you kind of know the weirdness that is in your surrounding area if you're not an explorer. And so, you know, you don't have like highways and stuff, right? So as you explore the steadfast which is kind of the more explored part of the region it has like cities and bigger populations than like the beyond uh you still you'll still find like pockets where people don't really like they sort of have an all bartering economy or maybe you've reached a, a village that like no one pays for anything like you just sort of share right mm-hmm. um but in many cities that tend to like trade with each other they will trade in shins and these are like pretty shiny pieces of like decently valuable like metals or synthetic materials um and it's basically just little like shinies <laughs> and so you'll get some number of shinies and you can trade them for you know weapons and a knight at an inn mm. and things like that so i'm going to uh lean into my assassin's creed obsession and go yes. with a, a hidden forearm blade that's, oh, that's retractable sweet. yes 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 do you want that to be medium or light medium um Part of me thinks medium, uh, just for the brutality of it. Um, <laughs> but part of me thinks light as well. Oh, it's hard to say. Uh, I feel like if I was jamming this, I would say you should take both. And you could just, you start with some starting shins, you know, mm-hmm. pay two shins and have a light weapon too. Oh, yeah, please. Or like two versions of it. Maybe yeah. you can have two modes. There's like a, a lever you switch. Mm-hmm. And it's a sh- short blade in some cases, and you can like flip it to the long blade setting. Yeah, I like that. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds pretty sweet. Yeah, um, I have a ranged weapon that requires ammunition, apparently, is one of the things they recommend I start with. Um, although I could always trade stuff out for shins and so on. So I guess I'll have like a little, little light bow. That makes sense. Oh, it says if you start with a ranged weapon that needs ammunition, you also start with ammunition. That makes sense. <laughs> okay, nice. then I've got my Sisk. Uh, and I've got my Oddity. I've got my Ciphers. Got crafting tools because I'm a cool crafter. Some shins. And I have some starting Iodum, which is like those special componentry if I want to like whip up a cool Numenera plan. Okay. I start with a light weapon, and I'm going to go with a razor ring. I love the razor but ring. But I want it to be like a bracelet. <gasps> yes. 
Uh, tell me what it looks like. So it's like a bracelet that is it like a can you like do you slip it off your wrist or does it like I want it to be like something that like where the pieces like interlink and then oh. like if you pull it a certain way they like pop up. You know how like bracelets like have beads that are like you know if, like it's like little triangles or something yes. kind of like fit together. But like if you pull it the other way that they like pop up. Oh my gosh, that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, does it like look? Um, I want to know so much more about your character. I guess <laughs> I guess I will wait. But like, I don't know anything. About I know, them yet. but I want to know what you look like. Like so much of Numenera is like weird fashion. There's a lot of cool character right. art in here, and like, uh, I, I really well, like- I still haven't figured out like what my like anthropic form. Oh, I is know. Either that's exciting. Cool. Well, maybe that'll come together as we keep going. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I can take some, I can choose two of these quote unquote inspired techniques. So these are my like special weird abilities for being a right. Um, Oh, very neat. Oh yeah. This is, this is the most Darcy ability in this book. Um, (laughs) it's called right tool for the job. Mm. Uh, it requires one intellect point. I, I have an edge, so it'll be free for me. And, Plus iodum. So I'll need some iodum, some special Numenera goodness to make it work. But if I have at least one unit of iodum, I can fashion a temporary device that provides an asset to one physical non-combat task identified ahead of time. This is like totally the MacGyver ability. Like, oh, I've got this paper clip. Of course I can, uh, <laughs> you know, help you. Um, what would be a cool physical task to do? I don't know. Uh, weave this magical quilt, right? Mm-hmm. Magical quilt weaving, naturally. I will I will <laughs> spend an iodum, which is important and hard to find, but uh, I can I can help you out with that one ability. That seems really fun. And it lasts for about a minute. So maybe I could, it's something I can build that will help the two of you, right? So maybe like our delve can climb really well, but maybe the two of us are like facing a really hard task, trying to get up this weird floating obelisk and I can fashion a little like helpful grappling hook for us. Very cute. I think the other thing I'm going to take is a scan for iodum. Uh, I I do really want to like find a lot of this stuff. And so uh, it basically, uh, when I scan an area, it grants an asset, uh, helps out with one level of difficulty mm. for initial salvage test tasks in the area to figure out like what's um, salvaging stuff. So it'll make it much easier for probably our delve. Hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to be like, I've got a weird beeper on my, I don't know, robot arm panel that helps me like, Oh, that pie, that pile of ancient trash over there is not what we should check out. We should check out this ancient pile. Hello, Delve. <laughs> please help. Please go get dirty for us. <laughs> uh, what are some of your abilities? Hold on. I got to get back to that page. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you have esoteries, Amelia. Yes. Um, so I picked, um, since I went for prepared before, I yeah. think I picked things that went along with that. So I picked scan. Oh, yeah. Um, which is two ability. intellect points. You can scan an area. Um, it reveals its level. Um, and you can learn facts from the GM, what they feel is pertinent. Yeah. I'll read this whole thing. Um, and then I also picked Ward. Ooh, um, that's a great you idea. You have a shield of energy around you at all times that helps deflect attacks. You gain plus one armor. That's so, awesome. Yeah. I figured those made sense. They do. That sounds great. They're not like the most exciting ones, but <laughs> <laughs> there will be plenty more excitement to have. Well, prepared, that, yes. <laughs> we we really are are sounding like some very prepared delvers. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and um, let me know what you pick, delver friend. Yeah. So uh, I have a question. Yes. Um. So one of the things I can choose is additional training, uh, which gives me yeah. two extra trained skills, and I've got uh from my skill list. Uh, it says choose from the following, um, and it just has a list of skills, but it doesn't say that I'm trained in those. Uh, if you, if you get a skill, you start out as trained. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then I can choose two additional skills if I choose this, um, which navigation and sensing danger sounds good. That sounds great. Um, so I think I'm going to go with those. And then I'm torn between find the way, uh, oh. which will be really helpful in a lot of si- situations, um, or trained without armor, uh, which 
means that you are trained in speed defense tasks when not wearing armor. Yeah. Both are good. Yeah. And I'm thinking since I move like a cat, I probably won't be wearing armor all that much. Mm, right. Hmm. Oh, I like that. That's a that's a good combo. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do additional training for that navigation and, and sensing danger. And then I'm going to choose trained without armor. Nice. As Very well. cool. So it'll be easier for you to dodge attacks when you're not wearing armor, mm-hmm. which feels very move like a cap. Yeah. Uh, one of the other things we have to do that comes from our type is our, our pool starting uh, distribution. So we got to pick our stats. Um, we have might, speed, and intellect. Uh, I start out with nine might, seven speed, and 12 intellect. Um, I have an edge in intellect, so it will I will be moving through those points more slowly. And uh, my nurturing descriptor gives me plus two to might. I'm sort of, uh, I'm a caregiver. That's very interesting. <laughs> I'm also trained in healing tasks from that. And uh, people who spend the day with me get to recover more points of to their pools when they sort of take recovery rolls. Mm. When they catch their breath, you'll get more points back. Nice. Very cute. Uh, so I'm going to distribute the extra six that I get from those uh, everybody starts with some number of values and then gets six to distribute usually. Mm-hmm. And I think I want to be a little quicker. So I'm going to keep 11 at my might. I'm going to add three to my speed to bring it to 10. And I'm going to add three to my intellect to bring it to 15. So I'm at 11 might, 10 speed, and then lots of intellect. So yeah. I'm a little, you know, decently rounded. Okay. So I start with uh, nine might, nine speed, nine, ten intellect. Oh, cool. So you really start out uh, well-rounded. Mm-hmm. So I get six additional points to divide them on your stat pool. Um, that's interesting. Um, is, there, is there like a maximum? Nope. Well, okay. Go to town. I think I'll put <laughs> one in might to get us to ten. And then I will put um, three in speed to get me to twelve. And then two to intellect to get me to 12. So I'll be 10, 12, mm-hmm. 12. Cool. Nice. And then do you get any points from your pool for, for being a uh, serene Ooh, that's a very person? good question. Um, let I me, might. I might, yeah. That's the descriptor, you get, right? You get plus two to your intellect. Nice. Ooh, self-possessed, plus two to your intellect pool. Cool. I like that. So I started with 7 might, 9 speed, and 12 intellect. Um, I got plus 4 to my speed for being prepared. Wow. That's really cool. Um, So I put 4 more into my might and 2 more into my intellect. So I'm at 11, 13, and 14. Nice. Does prepared come with any cool ability it gives you too? Um, I have, let's see here, tool aficionado. Ooh. Um. If a tool enables a non-combat task but does not provide an asset, you gain an asset to the task when using that tool. Mm. Ooh. Um, then it sounds like you can kind of cover us MacGyver-wise. Maybe I'll take a different right ability. Hmm. Yeah, so I also have a bag of light tools. Nice. Oh, nice. Oh, we're going to, like, absolutely be so good at I've got a, I've got a pack of light tools as well. Nice. Excellent. Um. My, but I'm really bad at being surprised. So, because um, <laughs> you're not usually surprised, so it's extra surprising when you are. I like the first that. action you take after being surprised, or when a foe attacks before you have acted, oh, is hindered. Goodness. That's extremely charming. <laughs> uh, oh, cool! I'm gonna take scramble machine instead of right tool for the job, hmm. which is uh, very fun. It's two intellect points. I render one machine within short range, unable to function for a round, so I can kind of do it at a distance too. So ho- I can imagine that like uh, working well with our delve um, if I'm sort mm-hmm. of staying back, but I see a, a weird ray starting to fire up its laser at you. <laughs> Maybe I can scramble machine. So I have a question. Yeah. For skill, it says you're trained in initiative tasks. Great what does question. That mean? Yeah. So when we get into uh, either a combat or something else where we want to kind of go round by round to like really feel how this fast-paced, tense situation goes out. Uh, We will usually roll an initiative roll and to find out who gets to act in what order. So uh, how we do that is if we have a level five um, 
Slidikin. This is like a horrible Numenera monster that I love that <laughs> I think is in the both the both books it should be in. Um, the orange one and the new the new core books. It's like this horrible humanoid with like uh mouths instead of eyes kind of all over its face. It's really gross and dangerous. Um so let's say it's a level five Slidikin and we're gonna like face off with it and try to uh, maybe run away from it or attack it or something. Uh, the Slidikin is level five. We would all roll our initiative rolls and uh, let's let's just do it. Why don't we do it for an example? So you're okay. trained in initiative tasks, so you're going to be act as a level higher, nice. basically. Okay. So if I roll for initiative, I rolled a 15, which is really much better than I usually roll, first of all. Uh, so that's a level five, right? Um, uh Three times five is 15, so I beat level five creatures, and so I will go ahead of it. What mm. do you guys roll? I rolled a seven. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A seven would be a level two, uh, but you act as a level three. So if there were some other creatures you know, in this gotcha. melee, you would go above them. And what about okay. you, Ryan? So I missed what you said about oh. this. Yeah, this is initiative rolls. So okay. um, there's a level five creature, and we're yeah. rolling to find out if we go ahead of it or behind it. Okay. So roll a d20. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. A one. <laughs> <gasps> Yay. A one is a free GM intrusion, so I don't have to offer you an XP, uh, but I get to complicate your life. Oh, I know. Very I fun. know Amelia likes that. <laughs> do it to her yeah exactly <laughs> awesome yeah so basically you'll um act as a level higher mm -hmm. and um you know we basically people are free to play around with initiative many people have different preferences and the book sort of addresses different valid ways to do it but uh the way it usually recommends is there's like the enemies have levels and the npcs that go in between them can decide what order they go in between mm. those those people. Okay. So it's pretty loosey goosey. Yeah. I'm, cool. I'm, I've got my abilities. I've got my pool points. We've yeah. got equipment. We've got ciphers and oddities. Anything else you're seeing that uh, you want to draw out other, other, other than going into like the background stuff? Yeah. Well, I looked at my uh, serene and my uh, moves like a cat. Yeah. So my moves like a cat tier one gives me reflexes. Which oh, is cool. uh, plus five to my speed pool. Dang. Um, as well as balance. You are trained in balancing. Wow. Um, so that's nice. That sounds very useful. <laughs> and then uh, my serene gives me, uh, you're trained in intellect defense. Ooh. So if I've got no armor, I'm trained in both intellect and speed defense. Which is Oh nice. my gosh, that's awesome. Um, I'm also hard to rile. So I'm trained in all <laughs> actions that involve overcoming or ignoring the effects of fear, intimidation, or panic. Wow. I could I can imagine that being really useful um, in all kinds of situations. Uh -huh. That's really cool. Uh, yeah, I should look at my focus. I haven't looked at that yet. So my focus tier one ability, um, and sometimes your focus gives you other stuff, like craft solution gives me an additional oddity, which is very fun. Oh, nice. I have an oddity that, uh, in addition to my stain begone, I have an oddity that appears to be a piece of clear glass in a synth frame. Synth is kind of like stronger plastic. By manipulating hidden switches on the frame, I can make random moving images appear on the glass. The images are usually strange and sometimes incomprehensible. Mm. So I've kind of got like a weird little tablet thing. Uh, if I have esoteries, um, it makes my abilities look psychedelic. <laughs> they have flamboyant visual and auditory qualities of your choosing. That's very fun. That would be really fun for a nano. Cool. So my tier one ability is minor illusion. It costs one intellect point and I can create a single image of a creature or object within immediate range. Um, there's some limitations about how big I can make it and I can't really do, uh, I can do sound, but not smell. And it lasts for 10 minutes. And so later on, I'll get like better illusions, basically. Nice. Yeah. How about you, Amelia? What's your uh, focus ability? Uh, who? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's beast form. Ah. Right. Um, on five consecutive nights each month, you change into a monstrous, monstrous beast for up to one hour each night. Um, it has different stats. So plus eight to your might, plus one to your might edge plus two to your speed, and plus one to your speed edge. 
Uh, while in beast form, you cannot spend intellect points for any reason other than to try to change to your normal form before the one hour duration is wow. over. In addition, you attack any and every living creature within short range. Oh. After you revert to your normal form, you take a negative one penalty to all rolls for one hour. If you did not kill and eat at least one substantial creature while in beast form, that penalty increases to negative two and affects all your rolls for the next 28 hours. Whoa. You need to hunt. Yes. <laughs> cool. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah. And you've got to either pick a creature or like just, you know, you'll have to tell us what kind of cool creature you turn into. You can totally make it up. Um, one thing I've seen a lot with this focus is like, you know, like you'd find in any kind of movie or something, right? Like lots of people either embrace it or want to like control their form better. And so you might seek out Numenera that helps you like, you know, be able to like, you know, uh, limit when you when you turn or somehow mm. like hold you back. So I could see that being all kinds of cool narrative options. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, I'm so excited. That's so nice. Um, awesome. I had one yeah. addendum to my weapon. Yeah. Um. Instead of it being like you know different lengths or whatever, I think when it's ex when it's extended, it's just a, a a light weapon, right? Yeah. But when you want it to do an extra oomph for medium damage, you have to time it to uh, retract or to extend as you're During getting to the, them. Yeah. That's that's really cool, and that narratively makes so much sense. Like why it would be rather than your attack being eased because it's a light weapon yeah it's a, you have to time it so it's that level harder yeah exactly hit. that's so cool oh i love it the spring action oh spring action <laughs> dagger hidden dagger uh-huh uh cool so we are most of the way through character creation walkthrough and now we're to um the part that uh you can absolutely just choose your background and as a team come up together with like What's your backstory? How'd you get together? What, you know, adventure are you on? Or in, in sort of Numenera's very menu options, but freedom to choose beyond style, uh, both all of your, uh, your little character sentence words give you some of some backstory to choose from. Mm, I like that. So your type gives you a connection to the world. Mm -hmm. Your focus gives you a connection to one other player character and your descriptor gives you a connection to the first adventure. So you can roll for them or choose. Um, so I'm going to look at my type first. So let me pull I up rolled my for that one and it's perfect. Is it? Oh. Oh, it's perfect. Okay. So I rolled an 11. While studying to be a nano, you worked as an assistant for a seamstress, making friends with the owner and the clientele. Oh, nice. What? <laughs> Isn't it perfect? It's, it's so perfect. good. It's perfect. It's perfect. Um, whoa, that's really cool. Was that like me or someone we both worked under? L let me roll mine and we'll see. Okay. Like how, if, if that fits with me at all. I'm. That's awesome. Okay, so I rolled a 12. Oh my God. Uh, your best friend from your youth is now a hated outlaw, though others say they are a hero. You're not sure where the truth lies. Oh, fun. Mm. Very interesting. All right. So mine, I rolled an 11. Uh, you taught children for many years, but those days are behind you now. Ooh, very cool. <laughs> uh, if you like it, you can keep it. If you don't, you can elaborate on it or roll again. Ah. Uh. That's a very good question, because I, I I like that having that as part of uh, the character's backstory. But, um, hmm, mm -hmm. I wanted something with a little more oomph. Yeah, roll again. I'm gonna, or I'm gonna roll again. I I've done all the above. I've done the ignoring nothing, using nothing on the table, uh -huh. rolling, re-rolling, <laughs> picking. Oh, this one's okay. This one's interesting. As an envoy uh, working in a distant city, you made friends that you still miss today. Ooh, mm. that could be us. That could be. Nice. And we could maybe, like, if we were going to set up that first adventure, we might, like, pick what city it is. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have some, like, cool connections there. Yeah. Maybe it's our home city or, or something. Maybe I, I was uh, working as an envoy teaching children. Yeah, that could be really cool. Oh my gosh. I'm imagining you as the um, Parks and Rec <laughs> Johnny Karate, right? Like, you're oh, just like, yeah. but you know, you're like an actual explorer and like competent person. Like, yeah. are you training them in like little kid, like 
dungeon delving technique yeah. or something else. <laughs> this, this also uh, screams. It's like little Cub Scouts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This also works uh, on a like a more uh, juvenile Dr. Jones uh, level. Well, instead Ooh. of teaching college level students about archaeology, uh, teaching kids. That is really smart. Oh, I like that. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Are you imagining yourself like being really interested in like ancient, like some specific like ancient civilizations? Like, are you imagining more a Lara, Lara Croft type, which is like, that dope vase over there has a lot of cool worth yeah. or like an Indiana Jones, like this weird civilization archeologists. Yeah. It, it's, it's hard to say because um, I'm thinking like uh, Lara Croft in terms of ability and uh, Dr. Jones in terms of like interest in the ancient past. Cool. I think that's a great fit. Awesome. So, I would pick focus next is what I would go to, although there's no wrong answer. Mm -hmm. So my focus is crafts illusions and my connection to another PC, uh, I get to choose one of the following. So let me look through these and pick one. Oh my gosh. One is I can pick two other PCs who are willing to be trained as my assistants. When I use my minor illusion ability, if both of them are in immediate range, they can assist me Ooh. working to ease the action. That's kind of neat. That's pretty sweet. I, I'm not exactly thinking of myself as like grand illusionist. I'm thinking I'm a bit more subtle, but... <laughs> Oh, there, there, there's always like, what I like about these is some of them are mechanical. Many of them are just curious story things. Um, this might be the one, this might be a fun one. One of the other ones is one of the other PCs face is so intriguing to me in a way I don't understand that my minor illusions sometimes look like them, even when I don't intend them to. That's like a cool Ooh. problem. Oh, that's really fun. Uh, Someone else can like has a special angle on my illusions and can point out potential places of weakness. So they're like really uh, observant. Hmm. And the other person, the other option is someone is never fooled by my illusions and never affected by the trickery of my special abilities. Oh. I can choose whether I or not I know this fact. That's really fun. <laughs> that is fun. Ooh. Oh, that's really cool. Okay. I'm having sh trouble picking one of those. Is anyone grabbed by one of those as like something they would like to be a part of? Either like, yeah. I really like uh, the one that was talking about working together. Yeah. Uh, because the, it, it really feels like this team has a lot of like built in synergy. Cohesion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. I don't love that like I have trained you as my assistants, but maybe it's just because like we've spent a lot of time together. Mm -hmm. Like where you're, it's not, it's not that I've trained you. It's that we're really good together. Mm -hmm. And like, you know how to like work with me to contribute to this illusion. Yeah. If that sounds good. Yeah. Or maybe like, you know, in campfire scenes, right? Like I'm like studying up, trying to like do better and you both like give me feedback. And so mm -hmm. I like that. I like look to you too as like very helpful, like advisors on my illusions. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, my connection is pick one other PC. That character is able to soothe you when you're in your beast form. Hmm. You'll never attack them while transformed. And if they spend three consecutive turns using their action to calm you down, you can revert to normal form wow. without having to make a roll. That's really cool. Yeah. So I feel like, Darcy, yes. if that's okay with you, yeah. um, I think I would like it to be you because I feel like we worked together at this tailor shop I think or, so. for this seamstress. Mm -hmm. So maybe I was like one of the early people to like know about this yeah. thing with you and we sort of worked it out together. Cool. Yeah. Hmm. I love that. So I, I'm trying to choose between two of them. Okay. Um, the other two uh, I don't like as much. <laughs> the, ones totally that I'm, the ones that I'm not choosing, um, their occasional clumsiness and loud behavior irritate you. Oh, <laughs> um, and uh, the other one I'm not choosing is they owe you a significant amount of money. Oh, uh, neat. So I, I like sometimes those are fun to go with where you yeah. get some like party antagonism, but I feel like it's better in a big group. And like, I think you're right that like our our deal right now is that we work really well together. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, one one of them that I looked at, uh, this character comes from the same place you do and you knew each other as children. Ooh. So that would be like a really uh, in-depth uh, relationship marker yeah. there. 
um, which is kind of cool. Uh, the other one is you aid them with advice and a helping hand when they need it. Anytime the two of you are next to each other, balancing, climbing, and jumping tasks are eased for them. Oh, neat. Yeah. Oh, both of those are really cool. I know. Um, I, so I like the idea that it's, we're getting into our fanfic section technically, but that's yes. okay. Um, <laughs> I like the idea, Ryan, yeah. that your character is really good at this discovery part of things. Mm-hmm. Um, and Darcy's character has this like tailoring thing. And I like the idea that you have been providing these iotum for mm. Darcy's character that like that makes is total your sense. connection there that like we worked for this seamstress and we're like this is cool we're really great at this and then you're like I want to do something more with the tailoring and like I want to make cooler things than just regular clothes mm-hmm. and then Ryan's character provides some of that special material until we all go adventuring to find it ourselves. I love that. Which of those I could I could like make probably either of those background connections fit. Do yeah. you have an idea about how do you want to make that fit? Right? Like we could have this like really deep history and a like, you know, maybe uh Amelia, your character and my are like really thinking about how mm-hmm. can we how can we like achieve cooler, greater things and then like in walks, you know, one of our childhood friends, right? Yeah. This amazing, mm-hmm. like someone who's, I'm, I'm imagining the cloud strife, right? Like yeah. you went off to like, go be an explorer, <laughs> caravan around and you're back, like super strong and capable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think I want to go with a uh, childhood friend um, cool. or, or it could be even family technically. Um, Cause it's oh. just, you knew each other as children. Ooh, um, that could be fun. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's say uh, we were uh, like best friends as children. I love it. That's really cool. All right. Awesome. So the final one is like uh, probably the one that I use the the least often, um, depending on the setup. So from your descriptor, you can get an initial link to the starting adventure, which is like you know, man, if game starts in five minutes and you're like whipping together your pre-gen and we're all just trying to figure out how these weird characters would be in the same room together. Like if, if that hadn't emerged already, you can pick your descriptor will tell you like, here's a way that you can hook yourself into the adventure. Mm -hmm. So, um, I have a list of options. Um, I could see that one of the other PCs was hurt. So I offered their aid, but we kind of really know each other. Um, I thought that someone else was crying out in need. When I investigated, I found the other PCs. Uh, I believed that the other PCs' tasks could end up helping a huge number of people. This was all playing to my nurturing side. Or I'd helped someone else until they no longer needed my care. So you went looking for someone or something else to nurture. Hmm. Very charming. Yeah. I, I feel like I, I would pick something else unique for our starting adventure. Cause like, But maybe that does inspire me to like, you know, what What does get the three of us out adventuring finally, yeah. right? Is it, I would love to find that adventure hook between the three of us when we fanfic. <laughs> yeah, I really like the, um, I really like the, the fact that we're all very familiar with one another before the, the first adventure begins. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then something happens to push us in that direction. Yeah. Um, I was looking at mine and... Uh, you were talking about how my character might have gone exploring and then come back eventually. Yeah. Um, one of my options is you were investigating a series of strange occurrences, which led you to, and <gasps> to the other PCs in your current situation. That's really cool. Yeah. So that sounds like uh, how I got, we got started. I got into yeah. some really mystery stuff and really uh, had to get back to my roots to to get people I trusted. I love it. I wonder if my outlaw friend is like somehow tied up in all this, right? Mm-hmm. My... <laughs> what about you, Amelia? What is uh, um, prepared you know, give I you? I don't really like any of them. Yeah, that's really um. fun. <laughs> <laughs> they tend to be built See, for like one shots where it's like, here's a your random adventurers who team up suddenly. Right. Yeah. So like one of them, um, when all your preparations came to nothing, you had nothing left to do but to strike out on your own which is when the other PCs found you. Like, okay. <laughs> like, um, for someone as prepared as you are, having friends to help you is just common sense. Huh. Um, let's see here. 
you could tell the other PCs weren't bringing the right tools for the job, so you offered to help. <laughs> or the other PCs asked you to help them get ready for an important journey, and you ended up going with them. Mm, cool. Yeah, I think what we would do is, like, our characters are so well synergized that we would sort of build that ourselves. It yeah. sounds like yeah. we're friends. I think your mysterious occurrences sounds very exciting. Mm -hmm. I can imagine that, like, you know... Uh, the Cypher System rulebook, the revised one that came out um, that has a lot more options more recently, uh, incorporated character arcs into it, which is just a formalized system of something that's already in Numenera, which is about like if players have personal goals that they want to pursue, that can be a way that they can like get XP. If they mm. say like, you know, and I could already kind of see these character arcs. I, I could imagine character arcs like, you know, maybe I have this outlaw friend that we might run into later, mm -hmm. right? That could be mm -hmm. a really interesting I have to contend with, like, who this person has become and, like, how do I feel about how they've changed? You know, Amelia, like, I could really imagine it being a driver of the whole campaign, potentially, like, if if we wanted it to be, like, mm -hmm. your beast form and, like, what, what you want to do with that and what you might want to seek to augment it or come to terms with it or change it. And, like, you know, series of mysterious occurrences. Like, all of these could be very good campaign yeah. length sort of yeah. issues. Very cool. Uh that is the end of character creation. Oh, wow. Yeah. We didn't name our people. Oh, we didn't name our people. We have to Damn name it. our people. To bring that up because I hate doing it. Uh, no. <laughs> um, but we did not name them. You're so right. Okay. It is, it is without a doubt, the hardest part uh, for mm -hmm. me. Okay. So I can't remember if there are any, like, sample names. Let me check. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Dang it. But I mean, you've got a billion years of naming conventions to work through. So I imagine that uh, pretty much anything goes, right? You're so right. You're so right. Um, there are two like major weird visitant species or sort of like alien species you can pick to play mm. um, in the ninth world. And they have some examples of those names, but they don't have regular names. So... I might pick something, you know, we have we have sci-fi to draw from, we have fantasy to draw from, we have a billion years of whatever weirdness is happening mm -hmm. here. Um, what's a cool, like, right name? All right, I've got mine. What's yours? Okay. I'm going with uh, Celine Lightfoot. She, her oh, pronouns. Thank you. I love it. That is so cool. Oh my god, this is so hard. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. Look, I've got a baby name book. Like <gasps> nice, good call. Yeah, I often fifty thousand plus baby names. <laughs> Bless. I guess I could have gone um, with like Arizona Smith or something like that too. <laughs> <laughs> one of my cheats is to like yeah. One of my cheats is like to pick a title instead of a name. Mm -hmm. Like then it's technically just a word um, <laughs> and then often i like use a regular sort of name of people i know and then like change around some letters mm -hmm. the classics um i'm gonna play jiren uh x-i-e-r-a-n jiren uh, nice um i'm gonna use they them pronouns uh, and I've got some last name. Let's see. I, I wonder, like, if we grew up in the same town, like, do people tend to have last names that, like, correspond to, like, you know, Lightfoot? Do they have this sort of, like, is the second name something you, like, pick that kind of describes you or mm. describes your family? I'm kind of inspired by your by your Lightfoot. Yeah, that's interesting. You, yeah. Um, like family ability. Uh, yeah, like, maybe. Like a, like a common trait. Yeah. That would be cool. Um, um, I'm thinking something about like nimble fingers. But I, I'm not coming up with the right word for that. Uh, oh, deft. Deft something like deft hands or, you know. Hmm. Uh, maybe just deft. Yeah, that's nice. Jiren deft. I like that. You know, I think it's it reminds me of like, you know, brewer or like porter or something like some of these become so understood to be like it, it's not weird that it's an adjective because it's just become a common name for that family right mm -hmm. so yeah i like jiren deft they them i don't I, last names are hard they are and often i just don't pick one because it doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> but i think i want to go with ursula oh i love name. it that is a good name yeah i don't think i'm gonna pick a last name nice. yeah that's fine um that's I often don't. 
Cool. Okay. Well, name in hand, character sentences, mm-hmm. backstory, stats, abilities, ciphers, oddities. I love I it. I think we're ready. That's amazing. I think we did, we did it. Do it. <laughs> oh, amazing. <laughs> Go us. Go us. <laughs> Oh, we survived that naming. Uh huh. We did. That we was did rough. Good. It was rough. We did it. <laughs> I'm proud of us. Uh-huh. <laughs> awesome. Well, Darcy, thank you so much for joining us for our Numenera character creation episodes. This was a lot of fun. I had a blast. Mm-hmm. I really want to play with these. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the problem yeah, we always I have. I could imagine. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for passing this curse on to me. Uh-huh. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, so, Darcy, you want to remind people where they can find you online? Absolutely. Uh, you can find all of my Monty Cook Games work and related things at montycookgames.com or at Twitter, Monty Cook Games, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Uh, my personal snailology, air plants, excitement, uh, other weird uh, RPG news. Uh, my personal accounts are uh, associated with Darcy L. Ross. So D-A-R-C-Y-L-R-O-S-S. And so come come talk to me on Twitter. I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Darcy. And thank you to everyone listening. Please join us again next week for our discussion episode. And also, don't forget to check out the MonteCookGames.com forward slash store as well and use the code CCC5OFF, all lowercase and the number five, to get $5 off your order. We'll see you next time. Thank you, listeners. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like The Broadswords. The Broadswords is an all-woman D&D podcast focused on drama, roleplay, and subverting stereotypes. Join the broads as they unravel the mystery of Snowy Rashomon, a land ruled by witches and steeped in superstition. Berserkers reign and spirits roam the frozen wastes. Yularis, Kila, Mipri all have their own reasons for journeying north, but they soon find they have something in common. They are pawns in a divine plot.